Hi, this is Mr. Bledsoe, and in this video we're going to use what we know about multiplying and dividing by powers of 10 to understand some things about multiplying other numbers. So as you probably already know, multiplying a number times 10 is pretty easy to do. For example, if I wanted to multiply the number 7 times 10, I know that the product is going to be 70. And if I wanted to multiply the number 48 times 10, I know the product is going to be 480. In other words, multiplying a number times 10 has the effect of putting an extra zero on the end of the number. Or another way to say it is, in order to multiply a number by 10, you move the decimal point one place to the right. So 7 times 10, my decimal point starts out right here. And when I multiply it times 10, I move my decimal point one place to the right. Multiplying a number times 100 or 1,000 is just as easy. For example, 7 times 100 equals 700. And 48 times, let's say, 1,000 is 48,000. And again, I'm just moving my decimal point to the right. In other words, in order to multiply a number times 100, I start out with my decimal point here, and I move it two places to the right. And in order to multiply a number times 1,000, I start out with my decimal point right here. And to multiply times a thousand, I move it three places to the right. So the rule is when multiplying by a power of 10, like 100 or 1000 or 10,000, you just move the decimal point to the right however many zeros you have in the power of 10 number. By the way, these numbers are called powers of 10 because you can write them as 10 raised to some power. For example, 10 is equal to 10 to the first power. 100 is equal to 10 raised to the second power. 1,000 is equal to 10 raised to the third power, and so on. And the exponent, remember the number that we're raising it to, the power that we're raising it to, that's called the exponent. The exponent in this case just tells you how many zeros you're going to have in your number, how many zeros you're going to have in your power of 10. Now, it turns out we can use this same approach when we are dividing by powers of 10 also. We just are going to move our decimal point in the other direction. We're going to move it to the left. For example, 7 divided by 10 is equal to 7 tenths. And 48 divided by 10 is equal to 4.8. Or another way to say it is in order to divide a number by 10, you move the decimal point one place to the left. So 7 divided by 10, my decimal point starts out here. I move it one place to the left, that moves the decimal point here. Or to divide by 100, I move the decimal point two places to the left, and so on. Now, another way to think about dividing by 10 is as multiplying by one-tenth. And dividing by 100 is the same as multiplying by one hundredth, and so on. So, for example, I could write 7 divided by 10 as 7 times one-tenth or 7 times 1 tenth, written in decimal form. And again, it's just moving the decimal point one place to the left. 7 divided by 100 is 7 times 1 hundredth, which is 7 times 1 hundredth in decimal form. And again, that's just moving my decimal point. It starts here. I move it one 
two places to the left. So let's take a look at how we can use these properties of multiplying by powers of 10 to multiply other numbers. My instructions here say use the fact that 36 times 27 equals 972 to find the following products. So my first product says 360 times 27. Well, I know 360, I could write that as 36 times 10. 36 times 10 is the same as 360. So that would be 360 times 27. So 36 times 10 times 27 is the same as 360 times 27. Now I'm going to swap these two numbers right here. I know I can do that. That's something called the commutative property of multiplication. That just means I can do my multiplication in whatever order I want to. So 36 times 27 times 10 is the same as 36 times 10 times 27. And now, since I already know that 36 times 27 is 972, then this is 972 times 10. And 972 times 10, I know I can just do this multiplication by moving my decimal point one place to the right. So now I know 360 times 27 is 9720. Let's try number 2. 36 times 2.7, I can write this as 36 times 27 times 1 tenth, or 27 times 0.1, because I know this, 27 times 0.1, that's the same as 2.7. Well, since now I have it written as 36 times 27 times 0.1, I know that 36 times 27, again, is 972. So this is 972 times 0.1. And again, I can use my rule for multiplying by powers of 10 to just move my decimal point here one place to the left. So that's going to give me 97.2. Number 3 says 36 times 2700. And I can rewrite this as 36 times 27 times 100. Again, now that I have 36 times 27 in my expression, 36 times 27 I know is 972. And if I multiply that times 100, again, I'm just going to be moving my decimal point two places to the right. So that's going to be 972, two decimal places to the right, and that gives me 97,200. Number four is 3.6 times 2.7. Okay, 3.6 I can write as 36 times 0.1. And 2.7 I can write as 27 times 0.1. And again, I'm going to use my commutative property to move my numbers around a little bit. I'm going to make this 36 times 27 times 0.1 times 0.1. Again, this I know is equal to 972. And 0.1 times 0.1, I could leave it like that, or I could write it as 0 0.01. And again, I can use this to just move my decimal point two places to the left, which gives me 9.72. Number five, 0.36 times 2.7. So let's see, 0.36 is the same as 36 times 0.01. 2.7 is the same as, two, as 27 times 0.1. And again, I'm going to move my numbers around a little bit. 36 times 27 times 0.01 times 0.1. That's going to give me 36 times 27 again is 972. 0.01 times 0.1 that's going to be 0 0.001 
And now I'm going to move my decimal point three places to the left, which gives me 0.972. And let's see, lastly, I have 0.36 times 0.27. So let's see, 0.36 I'm going to write as 36 times 0.01. 27, I'm going to write as 27 times 0.01. Use my commutative property to move some numbers around here. 36 times 27 times 0.01 times 0.01. 36 times 27 is 972. 0.01 times 0.01 is 0.01. 0, 0, 0, 0001, which means I'm going to be moving my decimal point four places to the left, which is going to give me one, two, three, and one more, which is going to give me point zero nine seven two.